Good morning and welcome to our first Sunday after Epiphany. It is nice to see you all virtually and get to listen to your conversations. It's kind of like our little mini coffee fellowship and it's a uh, it's an enjoyable way to uh, connect with everybody. And Greg, that was beautiful music. Thank you very much. So we have um, obviously our virtual service every Sunday that you might be watching now or you might be catching us later on YouTube or on the recording. So it is a, again a great way to keep connected to our church family and I encourage you to keep doing so. We've got some meetings coming up, first ones of the year, so a lot of new committee members, so pay attention to that list of meetings because some of them are this week, uh, especially SPRC is starting off, and next week will be finance and UMW, week after trustees, CCN, Ad Council will have their first meeting of the year, and into February, our reopening task force. We've got a couple of mission opportunities that uh, United Methodist Women are involved in that you can be a participant in. One of them is started, um, Cheryl Breitenbucher got this first one going. It is care packages for deployed specifically female soldiers. So it is an opportunity to send some things over to our um, female soldiers and those c can be snacks, um, body scrubs, lotions, hair bands, shampoo, some of those things that uh, we gals like to have. So anything that you would like to um, drop off at Cheryl Breitenbucher's house, her address is in the directory, directory or give her a call to sort of see about uh, connecting up with her. The other care pack, the other um, mission opportunity is Knitters for God, God's Good Work for Baby Hats. And um, I have an example here of one of the little baby hats that was knitted before. It's been down on the bulletin board in the, the hallway. But um, if you are a knitter and want to knit some, that would be great. Charlene Dobson's daughter, who is a nurse, makes sure that the hats get into um, the prenatal areas in the hospital. Um, if you don't knit but would like to donate some yarn, that's another opportunity as well. All right, I'd ask you to join with us at home in our call to worship. The heavens open, the spirit descends. Jesus emerges from the water. And a voice echoes through the blue expanse. This is my child, the beloved, with who I am well pleased. Jesus is named, claimed. We come to the water, we remember we are named claimed. Can it be so? What a thing to be named. Claimed. Let us worship the one who names and claims us still. God of grace and glory, we pray for those who suffer from pains and sorrows. We pray for those whose hearts are broken, families are fractured. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for pouring out your spirit on your son and pouring your spirit out on us too. May we too hear you say to us this day that this is my son, my daughter, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Morning Has Broken, and delighted to have Larry and Edie leading us through this. Hymn number 145. Morning has broken. Like the first 
morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the garden sprung in completeness where his feet passed mine is the sunlight mine is the morning born of one long light he didn't saw play praise with elation praise every morning God's recreation of the new day. Thank you, Larry and Edie. Beautiful. As we come to our time of offering, um, I invite you to be Excuse me, in prayer with me. Lord, for John the Baptist preparing the way, we thank you. For Jesus Christ proclaimed your Son, we thank you. For your love graciously given, we thank you. Accept these tithes and offerings we give today as our thank you for your immeasurable blessings. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power of Good morning, church. Good morning, my beloved family of God. It is always so good to see you this morning. I want to say Happy New Year one more time on this second Sunday. Uh, certainly, we see new challenges, uh, new ways of uh, opening our life. Uh, this year, very challenging. So let us hear uh, joys and concerns uh, in our church. And so, uh, Julius, would you take it away? Sure. Thank you, Pastor. Hi, everyone. This is the joys and concerns part of the service. If you have a joys and concerns, just kind of grab my attention. I'll call on you. You can unmute your line. Oh, Katie and John, go ahead. I would like for you to, or we would like for you to continue to pray for our son, Chuck, who is dealing with kidney stones. He'll be having surgery on Wednesday to get rid of that stone, that huge stone that he has. Hopefully that's the plan. And also with our daughter, Susan, who was diagnosed with COVID on uh, Monday and is very sick. She is home, but she is very sick with COVID. Okay, prayers for Chuck and Susan. Michael Ann. Uh, I would like to say uh, that we need prayers for our country. Uh, very definitely strong prayers to get this country back on track to
to a positive uh, outcome. Thank you. No doubt about that. Hi, uh, Cheryl, go ahead. Um, I'd like prayers for my grandmother, Joanne, who tested positive for COVID uh, yesterday, and prayers for my mom, Laura, whose cancer treatment is unstable. Uh, she's still getting transfusions more often than they'd like, but they're going to hopefully come up with a new plan with her doctors. And where, where does Julianne live? Joanne, she lives in Stockton. Uh, jo Joanne, I'm sorry. Yeah, in Stockton. In Stockton. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Certainly praise for Joanne and Lori. Yep. John and Kate, thank you. Also, prayers for our granddaughter, Kelly Moore, uh, who is uh, in the midst of recovering from COVID. Hi, Heidi, go ahead. You got to unmute there, Heidi. There we go. Sorry there. about that. Yeah, no problem. I do have a joy to share. I am going to be a grandma for the third time. All right. My daughter, Kate, and her husband, Mike, um, who've already given me two precious little granddaughters, wow. are giving me a little grandson in July. So we're all very excited. Thank you. And where does Kate, Kate and Mike live? They live the, here in Brentwood. They are why we live in Brentwood. <laughs> oh, wow. <Okay. laughs> That's not the only reason. <laughs> uh, well, that was initially what got us here. We followed them. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, that's great. Oh, that's that's always lovely when there's a new baby. Yes, great. And when does she do? July 5th. July 5th. Oh, right. Fourth of July, baby. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other joys and concerns? Hi, Jenny. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we're asking for prayers for our daughter who is having open heart surgery on Wednesday. Her name is Heather Purser. And where does Heather live? Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, California? Yes. Okay. Prayers for Heather, for sure, for a speedy recovery. Any other joys and concerns? Okay, I think, Pastor, it is back to you. Okay, thank you. I've heard from Logan family, they have some uh, minor symptoms, but they are managing uh, COVID uh, situation now, so please keep continue to pray for the family and still uh day funk uh he could not finish the last week uh so he will continue one more week uh or whatever he needs so continuing prayer for day funk and also carrie hutchison he is in hospice he's staying at home uh He's hanging in there, but uh, please remember Diane and uh, Carrie Hutchison in your prayers. Let us uh, pray together with silence. Let's take a deep breath. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out. Lord, we love you. Breathe in the breath of God, breathe out. Lord, we are following you. Breathe in the breath of God, breathe out. Lord, in your mercy. Let us start uh, lifting up our brothers and sisters as we read these names in our hearts silently for the healing and strength for the sick. Continue to pray for the healing and strength 
for the sick and the homebound sisters and brothers. O oh God, we lift up our loved ones for your healing. We pray for Heather, the daughter of uh, Jenny, uh, who is going to have open heart surgery this week. Lord, we lift up Katie and John's son and daughter and granddaughter Shelley for their situations. Lord, we lift up Cheryl's uh, grandma, Joanne, and also mom, Laura, for your healing. Continuing to pray for Dave Funk and Carrie Hutchison. And we give you thanks for the good news of uh, expecting the third grandson uh, in July for Heidi. We pray for healthy baby and safe delivery. Let us continue to pray for the safety and strength for all our medical workers. Also for all the firefighters and police officers, soldiers, school workers, teachers and uh, parents, and also Hope House volunteers. Oh God, we continue to pray for our nation, so painfully divided. We experienced unthinkable tragedy this week. We pray for your special grace, your divine rope that may somehow hold us all together in your mercy and lead us to a brighter future for all of us. Oh God, help your churches to be more boldly speaking up for radical love and justice and peace, as well as for radical healing and reconciliation in this difficult time. Help us to do our job as followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to have the love that may conquer hate and darkness. Help us, O oh God, to understand after so many years as Christians that love means something more, something bigger, something deeper and higher in the face of this moment. This woundedness, polarization, and violence. 
Oh God, we still do not know how to hold this moment. We only know who is holding us. We are in your mercy, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. Hear our prayers. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel according to Mark, 
chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river, Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for all God's people. So Epiphany uh, Sundays are revealing who our God is. Through the story of Simeon and Anna, we, we learn that uh, God was revealed, our God was revealed, that our God never sends out sufferings for the sake of um, punishment or uh, giving us lesson. That's not our God. The story of the Magi last Sunday revealed that our God blesses all the people in the world. His salvation, his redemption does not belong to some particular groups of people with particular membership. It is given for everybody. Everyone is invited to join in spite of all kinds of differences among us. So today, the story of the baptism of the Lord uh, talks about the power, the power that belongs to the children of God. Yes, we we have God-given power. But power is a funny thing. It always comes with a temptation, whether it is a small or big. For anyone who has the power, a critical choice comes in front of us. Are we going to use it to serve my own interest or to serve God and his people? Well, this is a cartoon shows Moses and his friend. Moses had some power, right? He raised up his hand high arms high, and the Red Sea was splitted. The dry land was revealed. So what a power he had. But he keeps making his friend's side of the river dry with his power. <laughs> While they were fishing, fishing together, so the friend complains, not funny, Moses. Whose power was it? It was not Moses. He knew it was given to him not to misuse it for his own pleasure. 
but to do the work of God for the people of God, for the all people in the world. What happened um, at the Capitol Hill during the week was so sad. It was not funny. Seeing a uh, Jesus flag among the violent rioters, not, it was not funny. So that day, our Bishop uh, Minerva Carqueño has called all, all of us out to pray for our nation. She wrote in her letter, the protest against the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris that have escalated to violence at the US and at the California state capitals are truly an expression of darkness based on deception and fear mongering. It certainly is not the way to be as people of faith. I think that so many of those rioters were baptized Christians. We all know that baptism does not magically make anyone a saint without flaws. We know that. But baptism should mean something good, something good that could reflect to some degree the image of Jesus, the character of Jesus Christ, who is full of grace and truth. But on January 6th at Capitol Hill, there was no grace in their violence. There was no truth in their false claims. Certainly, the power was not used appropriately, but very dangerously and selfishly. Today's story is telling us how to use power that is given to all the children of God. First of all, John the Baptist had an enormous man power. In verse 5, it is written, Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John. I don't know how many they were, but it was a numerous number, amazing number of people. It must have been such an amazing phenomena to watch this. And more amazing thing is they all came to John and they even confessed their sins to John. In verse 5 it says, So John listened to all of their secret sins. This meant that John had such a power. He was a powerful prophet to all of them. And I find this very, very incredible 
Oh, because it, such a thing did not happen even to Jesus. As I recall, no one in the Bible confessed their sins to Jesus in record. Um, the closest thing would be when uh, Peter first met Jesus. He said, Depart from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Even then, he did not confess what his sins were, at least uh, on record. What did John do with such an amazing power? He could have incited people to rebel against the Roman government and become a legend. Or he could have started a, his own sect and enjoyed a status of a charismatic spiritual leader for a long time. But he did not do any of those. He humbly led people to Jesus, the true Son of God. Think about that. Oh! those people came to John, not to Jesus. All those people. And he led all of them to Jesus. Certainly, it must have not been an easy thing to do. He could have fooled people if he wanted by acting like the power was his. The power, all those power belonged to him. But he knew the truth. He knew the truth that his power came from God. It was not his. He knew the truth that his power was not about himself, but about God and his people. How about Jesus? How about Jesus? He himself had even greater power, divine power. If he wanted, he could have started baptizing people right next to John, and more people must have come to Jesus rather than going to John. And Jesus could have gained bigger popularity and power and enjoy the fame. But do you know that he never officiated any baptism? Not even one. He knew that his baptism line, okay, so there will be people, a group of people who would claim that I was baptized by Jesus. So I have more authority. I should have more power. So he knew that his baptism line would cause division among his followers. You know, later, the apostle Paul, he, he remembered that. So he said, he, he, apostle Paul did not baptize anyone except two in uh, the first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 14 he said I thank God that I baptized 
none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. The power of officiating baptism could have really uh, brought a big division in the church from the beginning. But Jesus did not even try to do that. So sometimes what people do not do, what someone does not do, can tell more clearly about who that person is, what kind of person that is. So instead of taking advantage of his divine power, Jesus volunteered to be the one who received willingly the gift of baptism, even though he knew he had no sin. He lowered himself to be the one who received. By doing it, Jesus honored the ministry of his predecessor, John the Baptist. Jesus showed that we do not have to be the shining star on the stage, even when you know that you have bigger power than the one who is on the stage. He simply became a participant by doing it, we can enrich the meaning of a collective ritual like a baptism. Jesus simply participated in the baptism. By doing that, he revealed the fuller meaning of the baptism. So we know that John's baptism was about confession of sins, forgiveness of sins. But when Jesus came out of the water, the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. So Jesus revealed that the baptism is not just about the forgiveness of sins, but also it is about the restoration and affirmation of your identity as God's beloved sons and daughters. So even after our sins are forgiven, we, we have desire, we have a, a, this urge to know whether we are still being loved by God, even after our sins are forgiven. That's a big problem. When you make a big mistake to somebody, you, if you cannot um, do anything to repair or uh, to, uh, to pay back uh, because you don't have um, money or something, then you, you ask somebody who has money, your sponsors, and they can help you. So maybe uh, financially it could be uh, okay, but you still, you still know that you want to know whether your relationship with that person is okay. Is it, uh, can it be restored? That is a big question to all of us. So, Jesus said, it is, a, is, it is not just about the forgiveness of sin. It is about the restoration of the relationship. The Father in heaven, does he still love me? 
So our Lord Jesus, by not taking advantage of his divine power, but rather by humbly, humbly going down into the water, he served God and revealed the truth about God's love, unconditional love toward all of us. Both Jesus and John, by using their God-given power in the right way, they began a God's kingdom movement in which every power would serve the truth, God and his people. God has given all of us many, many kinds of power. We need to start using all those powers in Christ-like ways. About 25 years ago, um, I served uh, churches in Northern Illinois Conference. Uh, there was a Korean pastor who was appointed to a very conservative and very uh, big and proud congregation in the south side of Chicago. It was a time still uh, when many Koreans uh, were in fear of North Koreans and they uh, rejected with all their hearts, any attempt to, uh, to bring reconciliation between North and South Koreas. So at the time, this pastor, Pastor Kim, uh, he was a pioneer who had led this movement uh, to promote peace and reconciliation between North and South Koreas through so many uh, means possible. But this congregation considered Pastor Kim as a communist. And they considered him as their enemy. So church leaders adamantly opposed the bishop's appointment, but somehow bishop was very insistent. So in protest, church leaders um, changed all the locks uh, in, the, in the church so that Pastor Kim could not enter uh, the building. But uh, Pastor Kim still obeyed Bishop's appointment order and attended the worship service as one of the congregant. He was sitting uh, in the pew. And then some church leaders, uh, during their prayer, public prayer, they called the pastor Kim a devil. Uh, not ju just once, many, many times. Um, it was so painful. So after several weeks of such confrontation and persecution of the pastor, the bishop changed uh, his appointment and he moved Pastor Kim to a, a church in at Atlanta, Georgia. And after serving that uh, church in Atlanta, um, the pastor Kim served that church uh, after 10 years, that church had grow, grown so much and that church became the largest church in uh, Atlanta area. And after 10 or 15 years later, I had a chance to meet with uh, the church leaders, the same church leaders who uh, protested like that um, and they privately uh, told my husband and I that uh, they don't know why they did what they did. 
they said, we must have lost our mind. They realized that they were so brainwashed and they could not see what was really going on and who that pastor was. And they came out of that state and then they started express, expressing their regrets and they uh, apologized to the pastor Kim after about 15 years, I think. So these things happen. I want all of us to take a really careful look into our hearts and minds and see how much we are brainwashed by fear-mongering narratives these days. Plenty of lies tell us your life is stolen. It is okay to take your life back in whatever means possible. You are not good enough until you take it back by any means possible. All these lies, there are too many in the society. This is not, these are not truthful words. These are lies. Our life is still in the hands of God. Amen. No one can take it away from God and from us. So I hope and pray that we all may hear the truth from the heaven as Jesus heard it 2,000 years ago, you are my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So be relaxed. Do not be afraid. You are enough. You are okay. So be confident. Be courageous not to be swayed by all these lies. Let us listen to the voice of the truth. This power to listen and to speak up for the truth is given to all of us. There will be so many opportunities for us to speak the truth instead of lies in our homes, in our churches, in our communities. And those opportunities are God-given uh, chances to help our nation to return to be the proud, wonderful, uh, state, country of ours. So let us keep remembering our baptism and keep remembering what God is claiming on us and be bold and be thankful always. Amen. Let us pray. Let us have a one minute silent prayer.
O God of grace and truth, help us to be your, your lips, your hands, and your feet that are working for your kingdom so that we can serve you and your people each day with all the opportunities that we receive. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let us join in the closing hymn. Brothers and sisters, let us keep praying for our nation. Let us keep loving one another as our Lord Jesus Christ has loved us. And let us go from here in confidence because our love, the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit is always with all of us now and forever. Amen. And peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you.